After successfully navigating the fuel shortages, blockades, and protesters along Highway 701, we made our way back to Uyuni. Never thought I'd be glad to be back in Uyuni. <laughs> Only to discover that they too were running low on fuel. But after a bit of sweet talk, how lucky we got. Yeah, but I don't know what this fuel situation is going to look like. If they're running low on fuel, I don't know if there's roadblocks to the north as well. Lucky to have gotten gas at all, we departed the perpetual sandstorm known as Uyuni and continued north. Unsure of what fuel, if any, we would find ahead. The plan over the next few days included the roller coaster twisties of Highway 5 and a pit stop in the high altitude and historic town of Potosi before continuing to Bolivia's constitutional capital and UNESCO World Heritage Site of Sucre. Riding the remote, although surprisingly decent tarmac through these arid Andean foothills, we were sure to take advantage of any opportunity to explore the odd side road and take in Southern Bolivia's scenery, reminiscent of the American Southwest. But this desert, much like the Altiplano surrounding Uyuni, is high altitude and much colder than you might expect. The department or state of Potosi was historically referred to as Upper Peru by European colonists before officially being absorbed by the plurinational state of Bolivia and its namesake capital city was responsible for producing upwards of 60% of all the silver mined worldwide during the second half of the 16th century. In fact, the original mint mark of Potosi, the letters P, T, S, and I, superimposed over one another on the coins called pieces of eight is the origin of the dollar sign. But none of the villages lining National Highway 5 spoke of these riches, as most of Potosi's silver was shipped to Spain. Damn. Hmm. In fact, as we approached Cerro Rico de Potosi, the world's largest silver deposit and extinct volcano, looming over a city purported to be rich with colonial architecture and history, what we found was a crowded and complex maze of narrow corridors and street markets, rich instead with Bolivian culture and flavor.
at 4,090 meters, 13,420 feet above sea level. Potosi carries the designation of being one of the highest cities in the world, as well as one of the most polluted. Bye. After most of the silver was mined, the Spaniards left and an estimated 8 million Indian and African slaves died, producing silver for the Spanish Empire. All that was left was tin and zinc, the primary resources mined today. Tragically polluted air and water, and a mountain so honeycombed with mines and shafts that the citizens live under constant threat of collapse. Waking to the sights and sounds of morning rush hour, we fought our way out of the city center and luckily found fuel. You seen Fatura, por favor? Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, muchas gracias. After navigating what remained of Potosi's mining infrastructure and stopping for a few farewell photos, we were safely escorted out of town and started the short ride to Sucre. Muchas gracias. gracias. So. And while crossing the Pilco Mayo River, something caught Chad's eye.
the Antonio Jose de Sucre Bridge, also known as Puente Sucre. Constructed at the end of the 19th century to serve as an artery between Sucre and Potosi. Falling into disrepair after construction of the modern concrete and steel highway bridge, what remains of its wooden planks and fortress-like buttresses is free to poke, prod, climb or scale for anyone brave enough to try. Oh man, that's a view. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How was it up there? Huh? How was it up there? After killing a bit of time on the bridge and stopping for a cold beverage, just a stone's throw from Sucre, we jumped back on the highway where we promptly got a flat tire. Chad's favorite. What happened? We got a flat. Oh, son of a oh. Gonna pull up here into the shade. But it certainly could have been worse. With plenty of time on our hands and a bit of shade, we took our time annihilating our rear tube before chucking in the spare, setting the bead, and knocking down the last few kilometers to the hostel we would call home for the next few days. I don't think there's going to be any fix in that one. The stem's completely ripped out. I have never even... I've never even seen that happen. Look at that. Holy crap. What we do now is we take a little looky-loo inside, reach around carefully, look for anything sharp, that might puncture the new tube. This is why you carry a spare tube and a patch kit. There ain't no patch in that. Damn. Woo! See kids, nothing to it. Rose got a lesson in uh, flat changing. I'm pretty much ready to go pro. Yeah, she's a pro. Although for the record, she cursed us because she's been talking about flat tires for two days in a row. And this is the first damn flat we've got in like six months. So coincidence, I think not.
we took our new tube on a quick tour of the city. Before changing into our street clothes, locking up the bike, and walking to the local supermarket for cigarettes and diapers. Oh, they're like carrots or something. Or something. Whoa. I don't know what those are. Oh, yeah. it's so satisfying. Like, what is it? There's like the pixie sticks, cigarettes. <laughs> The cigarettes are right next to the M&M's and the Kit Kats. Oh, and diapers. And diapers. The next morning, Chad elected to go in search of a welder to repair our cracked side box frame. A new tube and rear tire. There was just one problem. Our arrival just so happened to coincide with the annual Circuito Oscar Crespo, a rally race that attracts participants and spectators from all over South America. And we just so happened to be smack dab in the middle of the race course. which would require a bit of creativity, as well as some assistance from local law enforcement to make it across town. Aqui, Honda Hi-Hat. Esse aqui, nesse todo a pé. A Santa Cruz. The policia not only helped Chad navigate the road closures, but allowed him to walk his motorcycle across the race course, much to the bemusement of the locals. I'm walking my motorcycle down the street. So, yeah. Muchas gracias. Hey, chicos, por favor. Dale, muchas gracias. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to charge me ten bolivianos, which is about a dollar fifty, even less. <laughs> I gave him twenty. So after a quick and dirty weld, that was certainly better than nothing, and yet another anarchy adventure. Oh. Seemingly the only tires we can reliably find Anaki Adventure. That's the one, baby. Perfecto. In all of South America. It was off to the local Gomeria for a quick mount before attempting to retrace his steps back to the hostel.
But despite his efforts, he was forced to abandon the bike, grab our new tube, and fight the crowds on foot. Before making his way back to the hostel and taking me out for a day at the races.